the University of the Visayas prayer. Lord, fill our hearts with your precious gifts. Let us overcome our weaknesses with your strength this very day, that we may fulfill all the duties of our state conscientiously, that we may do what is right and just. Let our charity be such as to offend no one and hurt no one's feelings, so generous as to pardon sincerely any wrong done to us. Lord, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, courage to change the things that we can, and wisdom to know the difference. Graciously hear us, O Lord, and pour your light into our hearts and minds. Assist us today to grow in goodness and grace. Amen. The University of the Visayas Vision and Mission Statements The University of the Visayas envisions to become an internationally recognized private non-sectarian university committed to academic excellence, transformational, and innovative education. To attain its vision, the University of the Visayas lives up to the following functional strategies. Research. The university will build and embrace a sustainable research culture among students, faculty, and non-teaching staff in support of its academic programs and community extension thrust. Instruction. The university will develop the talents and potentials of the students towards the practice of professions to be responsive to the changing local and global industry requirements. Extension. The university will capacitate a community guided by the university extension program and be a catalyst for social transformation. Values. The university will develop a community of God-centered, nationalistic, and globally competitive professionals with proactive values and attitudes. The University of the Visayas core values lead and serve. L. Leadership. E. Empathy. A. Achievement. D. Discipline. S. Service. E. Environmentalism. R. Respect. V. Virtuousness. E. Excellence. Good day everyone and welcome to Persons and Family Relations. We will now discuss Chapter 2, The Provisions and Human Relations. The law provides in this chapter the basis for liability. Ang pinakasikat yud actually is when you violate a law, you are liable. But this chapter expands the basis of liability. According to the Code Commission, this is calculated to indicate certain norms that spring from the fountain of good conscience. These guides for human conduct should run as good threads through society to the end that law may approach its supreme ideal, which is the sway and dominance of justice. So let's now start with Article 19. Article 19 provides that every person must in the exercise of his rights and in the performance of his duties, act with justice, give everyone his due, and observe honesty and good faith. Article 19 of the New Civil Code, ladies and gentlemen, is reflective of the universally accepted precept of abuse of rights, one of the most dominant principles which must be deemed always implied in any system of law. It actually parallels to the supreme norms of justice which the law develops and which are expressed in three familiar Latin maxims, Aneste vivier, alterum non leder, and ius suum seque trebior, or to live honorably, not to injure others, and to render to every man his due. So abuse of rights, no? There is a right, you exercise your right. When you have a right, you actually have an option no, to exercise your right. 
or you perform your duty in the performance of duty wala kay option but to perform it so in these particular instances you can still be liable under this article now abuse of rights would come in if there is an existence of a legal right or duty which is exercised in bad faith for the sole intent of prejudicing or injuring others. Putlan ka kurinti, this cannot be cut off automatically. Before this is done, there has to be notice first. Mauna nga, you may notice no in your bills ka ng Saveco or other electric companies. If ma-reach na kag, I think, second or third bill, there's already a notice enclosed in that bill nga ma-disconnect na ka within let's say 48 hours upon receipt of the bill kung di ka makabayad because they in this case the VECO or any electric company for that matter is now complying with the requirement that there has to be notice first before it cut off ang imuhang electric connection kaysa sa una di ka kabayad putlon man day nila and a lot of people have been complaining and this is the remedy done by the electric companies because this is what the law says before you exercise your right you have to exercise it with justice you give everyone their due and you have to observe honesty and good faith but you also have to remember the concept of damnum absque injuria wherein just because someone got hurt doesn't mean that the other party is liable already okay Example, there is an exercise of a right. If somebody gets hurt, one cannot be held liable. Example, if you have a property and you fence it, you have the right to fence it. Nya, kung ma-injure yung mong silingan, na-hurt siya kay mong hong defense, din na siya kaagi, well, wala may damage because it's your property, so that silingan cannot be held liable. Except, of course, later in your study of property, you know, when there is already an establishment of a right of way, ka na, di na pwede. But if in this case, imulang gikural imong property for security purposes, there's no damage, although nalain siguro imong silingan, but he cannot claim for damages because in this case, the principle of damnum absque injuria, damage without injury, would come in. Also in contests, kanang mga go-kart racing, diba? they have their own rules and the law will not interfere with that. Kung napildi ka go-kart racing, you cannot go to court by saying, oh, napildi ko because the judge is saying, uh, maone, maona, because they have their own rules. Now on to Article 20. Article 20 provides that every person who, contrary to law, willfully or negligently causes damage to another shall indemnify the latter for the same. The article punishes illegal acts whether done willfully or negligently. Thus, in the law of torts and quasi delicts, which you will study later on in law school, whoever by act or omission causes damage to another, there being fault or negligence, is obliged to pay for the damage done. Article 21. Article 21 provides that any person who willfully causes loss or injury to another in a manner that is contrary to morals, good customs, or public policy shall compensate the latter for the damage. During the discussion of the Code Commission, a question was raised to the effect as follows. Would not Article 21 obliterate the boundary line between morality and law? And the answer is that in the last analysis, every good law draws its breath of life from morals, from those principles which are written with words of fire in the consequence of man. Furthermore, there is no belief of more baneful consequences upon the social order than that a person may with impunity cause damage to his fellow men so long as he does not break any law of the state, though he may be defying the most sacred postulates of morality. What is more, the victim loses faith in the ability of the government to afford him protection or relief. And later, a question was asked if breach of promise to marry is actionable let us now see 
the answer in the following video clipping. Ang pangutana is this. Is breach of promise to marry actionable? Kung ugaling man sa aran kaniya nga pakaslan, apan di ay to later ego ra kabiyan, pwede ba nimo siyang ikiha? Kana ato ang sutaon karong hapuna. Well, in the past, it's been clear nga kung there's a breach of promise to marry, unya naanay mga actual nga mga expenses nga na-incur meaning nakagasto na ka for the gown, for the coat, for the venue, for the catering, for your entourage and all, nagpalit na kagkanding, nagpalit na kagbaka, baboy, unsa pariha nga lapaunon para sa inyuhang kami nyoon, kana siya, pwede na ni mong ma Paningil, or you will be compensated in the form of actual damages sa imuhang mga expenses nga nagasto because sa iyang breach, sa iyang promise to marry you. But what if ang failure is to comply with the promise itself? Meaning, wa siya nagpakasal ni mo and sexual consideration has already been given tungod sa iyang saad, imo nang nahatag tanan, bisag 1%, to anayin habilin. O tana, Pwede ba ni mo siyang uh, ikiha for damages? In the past, niingon ng Supreme Court, no. But this ruling or this rule has been modified in the case of Batch versus Court of Appeals. So, kung sa may nahitabo aning kasuha, muna ay ako i-share ninyo karong hapuna ang kaso sa Batch versus Court of Appeals. So, unahon na to, of course, ang parties sa case. Ang parties here are Baksh and the second one, ang babae, si Marilu. Okay? Si Baksh ang lalaki, si Marilu ang babae. So, si Marilu in this case, nikiha siya for damages under Article 21 of the New Civil Code. Ang Article 21 of the New Civil Code ni Ingon nga, any person who willfully causes loss or injury to another in a manner that is contrary to morals, good customs, or public policy shall compensate the latter for such damage. So karon niingon si Marilu, iyang gisaad na ko nga iya kong pakaslan. Apan di ay to, iya ra kong gibyaan. So ako siyang ikiha karon your honor. What happened here is this, si Marilu in 1987, August 1987, was 22 years old, a Filipina, and according to her, she's a pretty lady and of good moral character and reputation in the community. Si Baksh on one hand is an Iranian, an exchange student of the Lyceum Northwestern College in Nagupan City. Nagkaila sila dito. Unya, ning saad si... Baksh niya, nga kung imo lang yung kong sugton, imo lang yung dawato na kung gugman mo, pakas lang tika, Marilu. So, gumikan aning mga panaad ni Baksh, si Marilu, iyang gidawat ang gugma o mga panaad ni Baksh. Okay? So, because of that, niingon man si Baksh, August maruno, by the end of the semester, in October, pakasal na yun ta. Ikaw man yun ako ang lab yun magigay kay tika. So, Moto, gisugot ni Marilu and in fact, si Marilu gilive in na ni Baksh after ato. So, ni uli si Marilu, months after atong ilahang panag-uyab o panag live in, ni uli sila sa probinsya nila ni Marilu, gidaniya si Baksh kay para makapananghid si Baksh nga pakaslan siya. So, ang mga ginikanan sa din tao ni Marilu, very supportive, very conservative also, iya pong gidawat wholeheartedly si Baksh. Unya, nagpreparar na sila para sa supposed nga kami nyoon nila ni Baksh. But, niabot ang October 1987, October on the same year, ang mga panaad ni Baksh na hog ragyod nga igo ragyod nga saan. So, naabot sila sa barangay for a confrontation and then, gi-allege dito ni Marilu nga gikuha ni Baksh ang iyang pagkababay unya igo ra yun siyang gi sa aran kay para lang yun mapuyo siya in the same roof as Baksh and then it was also found out nga gipalaya siya ni Baksh 
og giingnan siya ni Bafs nga unsaon nako pagpakasal nimo nga minyo namang kong daan. The question is this, is the breach of promise to marry actionable? Si Bafs makabayad ba og damages diri ni Marilu sa iyang wa pagtuman sa iyang saad nga pakaslan si Marilu? Sumuo so, ni ang tubago na to karong hapuna. Giunsa ka ni pagdesider sa Supreme Court. Let's try to find out. So the Supreme Court said nga that where a man's promise to marry is in fact the proximate cause of the acceptance of his love by a woman and his representation to fulfill that promise thereafter becomes the proximate cause of the giving of herself unto him in a sexual congress proof that he had in reality no intention of marrying her and that the promise was only a subtle scheme or deceptive device to entice or inveigle her to accept him and to obtain her consent to the sexual act could justify the award of damages pursuant to Article 21 of the New Civil Code, not because of such promise to marry, but because of the fraud and the deceit behind it and the willful injury to her honor and reputation which followed thereafter. So, ningon ng Supreme Court, kung pagsugod pa lang ang imo ragyong intensyon kay ilarong ragyong siya, unya, nisaad ragyong ka kay aron ilarong ragyong siya, unya, ang babae ni give in yun tungod sa imong pagpangilad niya, in this case, you will be held liable for damages under Article 21 of the new Civil Code. So, that's it guys for the case of Baksh versus Court of Appeals. What's up, online students? Simula na naman ang bagong school year. At naku, malaki ang ia-adjust natin. Ngayong tayo ay humaharap sa krisis, dulot ng pandemya, lalong-lalo na kung naka-enroll sa online class. Kaya naman, to make things better while studying online, narito ang iilang mga tips kung paano mo mapapangalagaan ang iyong data privacy while using the e-learning platforms. Create strong passwords. Mahalaga ang bawat pag-login mo, kaya dapat lang panatilihing secure ng account mo with a strong password. Make sure that your password is as strong as you. Madalas, sa public Wi-Fi nangyayari ang mga diinaasahan. Di mo alam, maraming oportunista na nakiki-access pag libre ang Wi-Fi access. Kaya, connect with reservations. Connect only to networks which have passwords and are inaccessible to all. Maliban sa dapat nagising ka sa klase, dapat stay conscious ka rin sa na-share mo sa video. Mas mabuti nang makasiguro. Use fun and cute backgrounds para walang makakaalam sa iba pang personal information na maaaring makita sa likod mo. Lastly, don't leave traces. Di lahat ng files mo ay shareable. Burahin mo din yan pag may time. We all know that bad guys are now invading the world of web. Kaya, manigurado na tayo online students. Always protect your privacy, safety, security, and trust online. Now on to Article 22. Article 22 provides that every person who through an act of performance by another or any other means acquires or comes into possession of something at the expense of the latter without just or legal ground shall return the same to him. Example, na kawatan, gigukod siya sa polis, unya ang katong kawatan, gibili niya sa imuha, gibutang niya sa imong bag, pagdaga niya, ang iyahang gikawat. The question, na ba kay sala? Of course, no. But do you have the obligation to return sa object nga gikawat atong kawatan? Yes, because under the law, you acquire something at the expense of the latter without just or legal ground. So your obligation is to return the same to him. Another example, kung si Joven od Marie a sum of money evidenced by a promissory note, and at maturity, si Joven paid and a receipt was given to him. But when later on he was asked again to pay, he could not find the receipt. So to avoid trouble, he paid again. 
And then subsequently, he found the missing receipt. The question now is, can Joven get back what he had intentionally but unwillingly paid? The answer is yes in view of Article 22, which incidentally treats of an action in rem verso or unjust enrichment. Another example ka ng common ka ayo na to nga masinati, no? Panalitan ng pliti ka, unya gisuklian kag subra sa supposedly isukli sa imuha. Naaba kay obligation to return the subra. Well, under this provision, the provision on unjust enrichment or action in rem verso, you have the obligation to return it because you actually acquired it without just or legal ground. Subra ang sukli, so ang subra dapat imong iuli. Nakay nakitan nga butang, nga dili imuha. Imuha na ba na? Kay imuhang nakitan, finders keepers, nga na, dili. Your obligation is to return it to the owner. Okay? Because by virtue of the principle of unjust enrichment, you have the obligation to return the same. Article 23 provides that even when an act or event causing damage to another's property was not due to the fault or negligence of the defendant, the latter shall be liable for indemnity if through the act or event he was benefited. Benefit under certain circumstances can be basis for liability. Example, nagbagyo, unya na ay cattle na adto sa farm ni, let's say, Joven. Unya na save ang cattle. But the crops of Joven were destroyed. Can Mary, let's say, si Mary ang owner sa cattle, can Mary now be liable for the damages over the crops of Joven nga na-destroy because of the cattle. The answer is yes, because na ay benefit on the part of Mary. But if namatay ang cattle, ah, dili liable si Mary nga tukang Joven because wala may benefit nga na-obtain on the part of Mary. Okay? Article 24. In all contractual, property, or other relations, when one of the parties is at a disadvantage on account of his moral dependence, ignorance, indigence, mental weakness, tender age, or other handicap, the courts must be vigilant of his protection. What is the reason, ladies and gentlemen, for the court's protection of the underdog? The Code Commission says that the law takes great interest in the welfare of the weak and the handicapped. Thus, parents patriae, or the father or the parent of his country. Literally, when you say parents patriae, it's the father or parent of his country. The phrase actually refers to the sovereign power of the state in safeguarding the rights of the person under disability, such as the insane and the incompetent. Thus, were the law always to be applied strictly, there would be danger that injustice might arise. The state, as parents patriae, is under the obligation to minimize the risk to those who, because of their minority, are as yet unable to take care of themselves fully. Article 25. Thoughtless extravagance and expenses for pleasure or display during a period of acute public want or emergency may be stopped by order of the courts at the instance of any government or private charitable institution. Thoughtless extravagance, ladies and gentlemen, during emergencies may incite the passions of those who cannot afford to spend it. That is the reason for curtailing thoughtless extravagance. Now, the question is, who can bring the action? Can Kibuloy just say, oh, stop, stop the thoughtless extravagance? No, it cannot be done. A court action must be brought, okay? And only a charitable institution, whether it be a government or a private institution, may bring such action. Similarly, the mayor of a city, should he desire to stop an alleged display of extravagance by a social organization, cannot summarily order the stopping all by himself. He has to ask for a court order and a mayor indeed 
cannot just take the law into his own hands no matter how noble or sincere his motive may be. Remember the phrase court order, okay? Before you can stop thoughtless extravagance. Parihara na sa kaning mga nagbash ni Jinky Pacquiao nga dapat di ko no mag-display o extravagancy Jinky Pacquiao kada ganggi pang gutom amid the pandemic. You cannot just bash her to encourage her or discourage her maybe to display those extravagance. Kailangan, there has to be a court order. Okay? Now, on to Article 26. Every person shall respect the dignity, the personality, the privacy, and peace of mind of his neighbors and other persons. The following and similar acts, though they may not constitute a criminal offense, shall produce a cause of action for damages, prevention, and other relief. First, prying into the privacy of another's residence, meddling with or disturbing the private life or family relations of another, Intriguing to cause another to be alienated from his friends, vexing or humiliating another on account of his religious beliefs, lowly station in life, place of birth, physical defect, or other personal condition. This article, ladies and gentlemen, enhances human dignity and personality. Social equality is not sought but due regard for decency and propriety. Okay? Remedies here if any of the following would occur, kaning prying into the privacy, meddling with or disturbing, intriguing, vexing, you may institute an action for damages, action for prevention, or other relief, okay? And this may be instituted if walay criminal action nga ma-involve. You are only asking for moral damages in this case, alright? When you say prying into the privacy of another's residence, this would include by implication respect for another's name, picture, or personality, except of course in so far as is needed for publication of information and pictures of legitimate news value. When you say meddling with or disturbing the private life or family relations of another, this would include alienation of the affections of the husband or the wife. Thus, a girl who makes love to a married man even if there be no carnal relations, disturbs his family life, and damages may therefore be asked of her. Intriguing against another's honor or gossiping is also included in this particular paragraph. Intriguing to cause another to be alienated from his friends, this would include gossiping and reliance on her sisikag panglibak sa imong silingan. Unya, ang nahimong effect ani is na alienate na siya from his or her friends. Kana siya nga na-alienate ka ng tao nga inyong gisigiglibak may actually claim for damages or may institute an action to prevent you from furthering your intriguing. And when you say vexing or humiliating, this would include criticism of one's health or features without justifiable cause. Okay? Another example guys, kaning karong mga panahon na uso na magiging installation of CCTV cameras, no? And let's say ikaw, sikat ka sa inyong lugar kay ka-afford ka o patao daw CCTV, gibutangan ni mo, kanan ni mong area. Unya, sa imong ka-excited sad, giapila ni mo butang ang area sa imong silingan. Unya, makita yun ni mo, ang tugkaran, astang ilang sala, unsa gibuhat sa imong silingan. Can you do that? Can you cover in your installation the part wherein makita ang tugkaran sa imong silingan, ang balay sa imong silingan? The answer, of course, under Article 26 is no. Such installation, however, should not cover places where there is reasonable expectation of privacy. Huh? Unless, of course, the consent of the individual whose right to privacy would be affected was obtained. Timan ilang yun na nga one of the enshrined rights in the Constitution sa individual is the right to privacy. And if there is reasonable expectation of privacy, that should remain inviolable, that should not be contravened, that should not be violated, except, of course, with the consent of the person whose right to privacy would be affected.
We will just run through some of the provisions. Sa Article 27, any person suffering material or moral laws because a public servant or employee refuses or neglects without just cause to perform his official duty may file an action for damages and other relief against the latter, without prejudice, of course, to any administrative disciplinary action that may be taken. Article 28, unfair competition in agricultural, commercial, or industrial enterprises or in labor through the use of force, intimidation, deceit, machination, or any other unjust, oppressive, or high-handed method shall give rise to a right of action by the person who thereby suffers damage. Article 29, when the accused in a criminal prosecution is acquitted on the ground that his guilt has not been proved beyond reasonable doubt, a civil action for damages for the same act or omission may be instituted. Such action requires only a preponderance of evidence. Upon motion of the defendant, the court may require the plaintiff to file a bond to answer for damages in case the complaint should be found to be malicious. If, in a criminal case, the judgment of acquittal is based upon reasonable doubt, the court shall so desire. In the absence of any declaration to that effect, it may be inferred from the text of the decision whether or not the acquittal is due to that ground. Article 30. When a separate action is brought to demand civil liability arising from a criminal offense and no criminal proceedings are instituted during the pendency of the civil case, a preponderance of evidence shall likewise be sufficient to prove the act complained of. Article 31. When the civil action is based on an obligation not arising from the act or mission complained of as a felony, such civil action may proceed independently of the criminal proceedings and regardless of the result of the latter. First, I'd like to tackle nga when you are criminally liable, it also follows that you are civilly liable. Article 29 would provide nga even if there be an acquittal on the ground that the guilt of the defendant has not been satisfactorily established, and that is equivalent to one that is um, reasonable doubt, it does not preclude the complainant or the plaintiff in this case to file a civil suit under Article 29. Because under Article 29, even if there be a dismissal or acquittal of a criminal prosecution on the ground that the guilt of the accused is not proved beyond reasonable doubt, still, a uh, civil action for damages may be instituted. Ay lain-lain o preponderance of evidence ang gi-require. Kaysa criminal case, what is required is guilt beyond reasonable doubt. In civil cases, it's only preponderance of evidence. Okay? The same is true with Article 30 and Article 31 which provides that when the civil action is based on an obligation not arising from the act or remission complained of as a felony, such civil action may proceed independently of the criminal proceedings and regardless of the result of the latter. Remember, Article 31 is different from Articles 29 and 30 because Articles 29 and 30 are not to be independently instituted as opposed to Article 31. Okay? Article 29 and 30 only presupposes nga wala kay gi-institute nga civil action together with the criminal action. Article 31 would provide nga you can actually institute a separate or independent civil action or simultaneously with that of the criminal action. When you say an independent civil action, this is one that is brought distinctly and separately from a criminal case allowed for considerations of public policy because the proof needed for civil cases is less than that required of criminal cases. But with the injunction in general that success in financially recovering in one case should prevent a recovery of damages in another. It should also be noted that bringing of independent civil action is permissive and not compulsory. Okay? Articles 32, 33, 34, and 2177 give instances of independent civil actions together with Article 31. Diba ni Ingun Taganiha nga 
when you are criminally liable, you are also civilly liable. But note that in Article 21, this contemplates a case where the obligation does not arise from a crime, but from some other act like that of a contract or a legal duty. Remember guys, nga dili lang ang criminal prosecution or sa criminal prosecution ka makaklaim og civil liability. Okay? Article 1157 of the New Civil Code enumerates the other sources of obligation from which the civil liability may arise as a result of the same act or omission. These are the following. The law may be a source of obligation from which civil liability may arise. Second, contracts. Third, quasi-contracts. And quasi-delicts. Okay? Ang ikalima na is crime. So, Article 33, on one hand, also provides that in cases of defamation, fraud, physical injuries, a civil action for damages entirely separate and distinct from the criminal action may be brought by the injured party. Such civil action shall proceed independently of the criminal prosecution and shall require only a preponderance of evidence. Let us discuss Article 31 and 33 together by discussing the case of People versus Bayotas. What happened in People versus Bayotas is this. Rogelio Bayotas was actually charged with rape and he was eventually convicted on June 19, 1991. Pending appeal of his conviction, Bayotas died on February 4, 1992 at the National Bilibid Hospital due to cardiorespiratory arrest, secondary to hepatic ang kepalopathy, secondary to hepo carcinoma gastric malingering. Consequently, the Supreme Court in its resolution on May 20, 1992 dismissed the criminal aspect of the appeal. However, it required the Solicitor General to file a comment with regard to Bayota's civil liability arising from his commission of the offense charge. The issue here is Thus, death of the accused pending appeal of his conviction extinguish his civil liability. The Supreme Court answered in the following wise, okay? Ningun ang Supreme Court, death of the accused pending appeal of his conviction extinguishes his criminal liability as well as the civil liability based solely thereon. Meaning, ang na-extinguish ra is the civil liability arising from the crime. If other sources of obligation such as laws, contracts, quasi-delicts, quasi-contracts, wala na na-extinguish. Okay? Ngayon ng Supreme Court as opined by Justice Rigolado in this regard, the death of the accused prior to final judgment terminates his criminal liability and only the civil liability directly arising from and based solely on the offense committed. That is, civil liability ex delito in senso strictior. Corollary, the claim for civil liability survives notwithstanding the death of the accused, if the same may also be predicated on a source of obligation other than delict. Article 1151 of the Civil Code enumerates these other sources of obligation with which the civil liability may arise as a result of the same act or omission, as follows, law, contracts, quasi-contracts, quasi-delicts. The Supreme Court further said that where the civil liability survives, as explained earlier, an action for recovery, therefore, may be pursued but only by way of filing a separate civil action subject to the provisions of the rules of criminal procedure. 
and this separate civil action may be enforced either against the executor or administrator or the estate of the accused depending on the source of obligation upon which the same is based as explained earlier. Finally, according to the Supreme Court, the private offended party need not fear a forfeiture of his right to file this separate civil action by prescription in cases where during the prosecution of the criminal action and prior to its extinction, the private offended party instituted together therewith the civil action. In such case, the statute of limitations on the civil liability is deemed interrupted during the pendency of the criminal case conformably with provisions of 1155 of the civil code that should thereby avoid any apprehension on a possible privation of right by prescription and again the supreme court in conclusion said that applying this set of rules to the case at bench we hold that the death of the appellant by extinguished his criminal liability and civil liability based solely on the act complained of, which is rape. So in this case, ha, the one that is only extinguished is the civil liability arising from the criminal action. If it, arise, if it arose out of other sources of obligation, it will not be extinguished. Okay? Articles 34 and 35 are matters of reading. Article 34 provides that when a member of a city or municipal police force refuses or fails to render aid or protection to any person in case of danger to life or property, such peace officer shall be primarily liable for damages, and the city or municipality shall be subsidiarily responsible therefore. The civil action herein recognized shall be independent of any criminal proceedings and a preponderance of evidence shall suffice to support such action. Article 35, when a person claiming to be injured by a criminal offense charges another with the same for which no independent civil action is granted in this code or any spe special law, but the justice of peace finds no reasonable grounds to believe that a crime has been committed, or the prosecuting attorney refuses or fails to institute criminal proceedings, the complaint may bring a civil action for damages against the alleged offender. Such civil action may be supported by a preponderance of evidence, and upon the defendant's motion, the court may require the plaintiff to file a bond to indemnify the defendant in case the complaint should be found to be malicious. If during the pendency of the civil action and information should be presented by the prosecuting attorney, the civil code shall be suspended until the termination of criminal proceedings. Article 36, Prejudicial Questions. Prejudicial questions which must be decided before any criminal prosecution may be instituted or may proceed shall be governed by rules of court which the Supreme Court shall promulgate and which shall not be in conflict with the provisions of this code. What is a prejudicial question, ladies and gentlemen? Prejudicial question is one which must be decided first before a criminal action may be instituted or may proceed because a decision therein is vital to the judgment of the criminal case. The prejudicial question must be determinative of the case before the court, and the jurisdiction to try said question must be lodged in another tribunal. Murana og pagpanguyab. Okay? Prejudicial question, ani? Before kasugton, the prejudicial question is, unsa man, tinood ba nga, imo kong gihigugma? That should be the question that must be determinative of the answer yes sa pagpanguyab ni mo, okay? Well, legally speaking, there are requisites to the prejudicial question. First, the civil case involves facts intimately related to those upon which the criminal prosecution would be based. Just start with this, guys. Naani duha ka kaso, civil and criminal, okay? The second requisite is in the resolution of the issue or issues raised in the civil action, the guilt or innocence of the accused would necessarily be determined. 
and third jurisdiction to try said question must be lodged in another tribunal example is if si Juven would file for a violation of the anti-squatting law against Marie over his alleged property okay and then Marie on one hand would interpose the defense that ah Juven you are not the owner of the property I am the owner of the property so that um, defense of Marie would now constitute as a prejudicial question. Remember ha, nga dapat there has to be two, two cases nga existing, ang criminal o ang civil. So si Marie in this case has to file for another case claiming ownership. O niya kailangan i-establish niya dito that indeed siya ang tag-iya kailangan tong humnon tong kasuha because that is the prejudicial question. If ma-establish ni Marie nga siya ang tag-iya, there is no squatting. Okay? If they may establish ni Marie, now, the question in the criminal prosecution, if there was indeed squatting, would now be determined. Okay? Sa una guys, before the effectivity of the family code, the validity or the nullity of the first marriage is a prejudicial question to the criminal case of bigamy. But because of Article 40 of the family code, which provides that the absolute nullity of a previous marriage may be invoked for purposes of remarriage on the basis solely of a final judgment declaring such previous marriage void, this question on validity or nullity of first marriage in bigamy cases would no longer be raised as a defense. Okay? Kaysa una mang good, kung ikiha o bigamy, ang ban na for marrying twice or asawa as the case may be, the common defense would be, oh, my prior marriage or my previous marriage was not valid. It was null and void. So, kailangan ni establish siya that that first marriage was null and void because if it can be established that that first marriage is null and void, there's no bigamy in the first place. Mauna sa una ang dipinsa sa mga magpakasal o kaduha, katulo and all that. But today, effective during the passage of the family code, the specified good in Article 40, nga ang absolute nullity of a previous marriage may be invoked for purposes of remarriage on the basis solely of a final judgment declaring such previous marriage void. You cannot unilaterally say that my previous marriage was void. There has to be a final judgment declaring such previous marriage void. Okay? Another instance is a criminal prosecution for damage to property. Ang dipinsa karon sa imong gikiha for damage to property would be this, you are not the owner of the property. So, there is a separate civil action that would establish the ownership of the said property. And it should be resolved first before you can claim damage to the said property. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is prejudicial question. We now move to persons. Title 1, Civil Personality, Chapter 1, General Provisions. Okay? Persons, ladies and gentlemen, is a concept in the law wherein we talk about personality. You have to remember that without personality, you cannot do acts with legal significance or you cannot be a subject of legal acts or relations. Okay? A person... Friends is any being, whether natural or artificial, capable of possessing legal rights and obligations. Okay? There are two kinds of persons, natural persons and juridical persons. When we say natural persons, these are human beings. When you say juridical persons, these are persons created by operation of law. Now let's start off with Article 37. Article 37 provides that juridical capacity, which is the fitness to be a subject of legal relations, is inherent in every natural person, as is lost only through death. Capacity to act, which is the power to do acts with legal effect, is acquired and may be lost. When you say juridical capacity, this is the fitness to be the subject of legal relations. When we talk about capacity to act, this is the power to do acts with legal effect. A baby, ladies and gentlemen, does he have a personality? Yes, na as a juridical personality because a baby is fit to be a subject of legal relations. The question is this, pwede ba siyang model or he can have TV ads? Yes, pwede. 
But does this baby have a capacity to act? No, ha? Because no matter how many contracts he sign, it produces no legal effects. Kay baby pamansiya. Articles 38 and 39 would say that minority, insanity, or imbecility, the state of being a deaf mute, prodigality, and civil interdiction are mere restrictions on capacity to act and do not exempt the incapacitated person from certain obligations as when the latter arise from his acts or from property relations such as easements. 39 provides that the Following circumstances, among others, modify or limit capacity to act. Your age, insanity, imbecility, the state of being a deaf mute, penalty, prodigality, family relations, alienage, absence, insolvency, and trusteeship. The consequences of these circumstances are governed in this code, other codes, the rules of court, or in special laws. Capacity to act is not limited on act of religious belief or political opinion. Now, we go to Article 40. Article 40 provides that birth determines personality, but the conceived child shall be considered born for all purposes that are favorable to it, provided it be born later with the conditions specified in the following article. The following article, Article 41, provides that for civil purposes, the fetus is considered born, if it is alive at the time it is completely delivered from the mother's wound. However, if the fetus had an intrauterine life of less than 7 months, it is not deemed born if it dies within 24 hours after its complete delivery from the maternal womb. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that while birth determines personality, personality begins at the moment of conception personality does not begin at birth it begins at conception okay this personality at conception is called the presumptive personality it is of course essential that birth should occur later otherwise the fetus will be considered as never having possessed any legal personality Example, a woman is pregnant and say the father is Joven. And then Joven would donate the 1 million pesos to the fetus. Is it a valid donation? Under the law, the fetus is given presumptive personality. Okay. However, it must be born in accordance with the law in order for the donation to be effective. If it is not born in accordance with the law, then the donation is not effective. Ang common ani nga question sa bar is this. Let's say si Joven would give to the fetus 1 million pesos and nanganak karon ang babay nga gibunti sa ni Joven, example rin ni Joven. And then pagpanganak, ang bata namatay. Okay? The question is, can the mother inherit? Diha ang musod ang issue. Kung ang mama, because when you are a child, basically, wakang kay anak as a child, so ang imuhang compulsory heir is ang imuhang parent. In this case, imuhang mama, baron. Okay? The particular case would lend to Articles 40 and 41. Unsa may pasabot, Ana. As long as the child was delivered completely from the maternal womb and it is alive, the donation is valid and the mother can inherit. However, if the fetus had an intrauterine life of less than 7 months, it is not deemed born if it dies within 24 hours after its complete delivery from the maternal womb. If, let's say, the woman, nagipabuntisan, ni Joven, nanganak prematurely, let's say, on the 6 month, 6 months and 15 days sa iyahang pregnancy, nigawas ang bata, but after paggawas sa bata, after 10 hours, namatay ang bata. The donation is not valid, okay? Because under the law, if the fetus had an intrauterine life of less than 7 months, it is deemed born only if it survives within 24 hours. If it dies within 24 hours after its complete delivery from the maternal womb, 
it is not deemed born. Okay? But there's no question if natao siya beyond the seven-month intrauterine period. Okay? I hope that is clear. Article 42 provides for the instance wherein civil personality is extinguished. Ningo ng 42, civil personality is extinguished by death. The effect of death upon the rights and obligations of the deceased is determined by law, by contract, or by will. Article 43, ladies and gentlemen, talks about presumptions on survivorship. It provides that if there is a doubt as between two or more persons who are called to succeed each other, as to which of them died first, whoever alleges the death of one prior to the other shall prove the same. In the absence of proof, it is presumed that they died at the same time, and there shall be no transmission of rights for one to the other. Remember that Article 43 applies when the case involves two or more persons who are called to succeed each other. In all other cases, we should apply the provisions on the revised rules of court. Okay? Chapter 3 provides for juridical or provisions on juridical persons. Article 44 provides that the following are juridical persons. Diba? We talked about earlier, we have natural and juridical persons. Unsa man yung mga juridical persons, these are the following. The state and its political subdivision, other corporations, institutions, and entities for public interest or purpose created by law. Their personality begins as soon as they have been constituted according to law. Corporations, partnerships, and associations for private interest or purpose to which the law grants a juridical personality separate and distinct from that of each shareholder, partner, or member. Kaninga mga provisions, guys, will be discussed further in your subjects, mga corporation law, public corporation. Question, can the sole proprietorship be given a juridical personality? Example, um, Juan Sarisari Store, owned by Juan de la Cruz. Can Juan Sarisari Store be given a juridical personality? Dili, ha? Because uh, Juan Sarisari Store is owned solely by Juan and the personality of Juan is not separate and distinct from the Sarisari Store. Remember lang, uh, sole proprietorship does not have a separate and distinct personality from its honor okay anyway i'll go back by the way i'll go back to the article or provision article 41 ha nakalimot ko nga afitos is accorded full personality in case of support okay dili kailangan mataw ang bata before pa siya suportaan because ang bata while in the maternal womb needs support or the fetus actually needs support ngayahang pang check up vitamins and all that so dili pwedeng moingon ang amahan o wala pa na personality di pa na siya pwedeng makaklaim og support no because a fetus is now a full, afforded full personality by virtue of the presumptive personality with respect to support so that concludes our discussion for today, ladies and gentlemen. We will now start discussing the provisions on family code, starting up with the provision on marriage next meeting. I hope you learned something from this discussion. If you have questions, please feel free to ask me in the comment section or message me via private message in my messenger or in a chat via Teams. Thank you very much. Amping.